All right. Hi. I'm really excited to talk to you guys today. I'd like to thank TEDx for inviting me to talk. And I'm really excited I get to talk to you guys before lunch. <laughs> All right. Let's get started. Wrong button. I knew I was going to do that. All right, unless you guys have been living under a rock for the past 30 years, you probably know by now that there is an overweight slash obesity epidemic in this country. This is the first time in human history that non-communicable disease, such as heart disease, stroke, and diabetes, pose a greater threat than infectious disease. 35 million people worldwide are affected by these non-communicable diseases. 70% of people in the U.S. over the age of 20 are considered overweight or obese. And unfortunately, when you are in that category of people, you are more likely to have a non-communicable disease. Now, we cannot talk about this problem without talking about the children. One third of children or adolescents in the U.S. are overweight or obese. This doubles the chances of these children getting diabetes. So this is a problem, right? We have a problem here. How did we get here? Well, what I think has happened over the years is people have stopped looking at food as fuel and now look at food as some kind of reward. Food is fuel, people. Food is how we rebuild muscle, how we make more cells, how we prime our immune systems. It is how we survive, right? I know all of you somehow got here today, maybe it's by a car, all right? And you have maybe an unleaded engine. And I know you are all smart enough to put unleaded fuel in your unleaded engine. You're not going to the gas station and putting in diesel fuel, right? And why is that? Because that's going to break my car. No one wants to break their car. It's like $20,000 down the drain, right? So why do we continuously put the wrong fuel in our own bodies? Well, there's a lot of reasons as to why. Let's just start with the social aspect. Life is celebrated with bad food, right? It is. I have been working with people for over four years now, and let me tell you, I have heard every excuse that you can imagine. Well, it was Christmas, Michelle. It was Thanksgiving. It was Fourth of July weekend. It was Friday night. I had a really rough work week. It was Tuesday. And well, what else am I supposed to have with my tacos? Seriously, I've heard it all. Now, that is really only the food that we're admitting to eating that is bad, right? And when you add that up, it ends up to be a lot, right? There's a million excuses for it all, and it adds up to be a lot. And you're admitting that to yourself. But this actually doesn't include the food, um, the, um, the, 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 the stuff that is hiding in our food, right? Those healthy options, and I do love to pick on yogurt, all right, because everybody thinks after that really rough weekend that they're going to have yogurt for lunch because it's something healthy. It's one of those healthy options, correct? And they're sitting there for lunchtime, and they're just spooning that fruit in. You know, they got the good one, right, the strawberries at the bottom, and they're scooping it and mixing it. Meanwhile, there are six different types of sugar in that really healthy option that you decided to eat today. Six. Now, I don't know if you guys realize this, but there are actually 61 different kinds of ways to say sugar in our food industry. And if you can't read this all at once, that's fine. You could probably look it up somewhere and find it. And you should know what these are. So now I know what you're thinking. Well, <laughs> Michelle is a uh, Sugar really that bad? It's been around for a while. Is that the problem with society? Well, let's look at it as a molecule, because I am a scientist at the end of the day. <laughs> and I do like to take a scientific approach to things. So as a molecule, it has carbon in it. Oh, it has hydrogen in it. 
It has oxygen in it. Well, I know that carbon, that's in my body. That's an important part of my body. Uh, hydrogen, I mean, that's in water. That can't be too bad, right? Oxygen, I'm breathing that right now. That's got to be important. All right. Let's keep thinking about that. Let's look at cocaine. Everybody here knows that cocaine is bad. If you don't know it's bad, we might have to talk later. But it does have carbon in it. Look at that. It has hydrogen in it. It has oxygen in it. And it has a nitrogen element in it. And well, nitrogen, that's one of the essential elements of life. But we all know that cocaine is bad. Now I know what you're thinking. Uh, are you trying to tell me that sugar is as bad as cocaine? Well, I'm not saying it's mm, as bad, but it is as, as addictive. Right, right now you see uh, two PET scans, one of a person about to have a lot of sugar. And oh, its brain is lighting up. The other person, they're about to get some cocaine, and the same spots in their brain are lighting up, the same spots. And you can do this with other drugs and also with alcohol indicating that sugar is as addictive as drugs and alcohol. Not only is it as addictive, but it can play all kinds of games with our brains. All right? First, it increases opium receptors in our brains. And why is that bad? Because the more opium receptors you have, the more you need to, to fill those opium receptors with sugar. So it becomes this constant cycle of, well, if I have some sugar, then I need to have more of it because my brain needs to fill those opium receptors. It reduces brain-derived neurotrophic factor. So what is that? That is really important for memorization and for learning. Really important. And so I love to have a picture of a soccer practice happening. Physical exercise actually increases those uh, neurotrophic factors, increases it one of the few things that actually does. And I'm a mom. I have a six-year-old little girl. And I'm one of those moms that I put my kid in everything. I want her to be active, right, because that's what's wrong with society now is maybe our kids aren't active enough. And then after soccer practice, what happens? Mom and dad give them sugar, right? We got muffins after practice. We got brownies after practice. And why? Because the kids just really worked hard. They got a high metabolism. They deserve it. Meanwhile, the best thing you could probably do for your child after they have physical activity is make them do their homework. Because they are ready to learn. Right? That factor is increased in their brain. They're ready to go. Also, a new study just came out that showed that sugar can shrink your hippocampus. Now, life trauma can also shrink your hippocampus, early life trauma. So again, as a mom, I would literally bubble wrap my daughter if I could, right? We all would. That is my job, is to protect her, to try to really make her the best human being I can possibly make her. And early life trauma, right? Early life trauma, you don't, you don't want your kid to endure any kind of early life trauma, right? Well, now they're showing that sugar can shrink your hippocampus similar to early life trauma. And why would you not want your hippocampus to shrink? Well, it's part of your brain, right? But it's really important for moving short-term memory into long-term memory. It's also really important for spatial awareness, like understanding directions, sense of smell. So it's really not a part of our brains that we want to shrink. So that's just some of the things that can happen to our brains when we eat a lot of sugar. Here is an example of what happens over prolonged use of sugar. Right? Nowadays, we're comparing it to prolonged use of alcohol. And 8 out of 11 diseases that you can get from prolonged use of alcohol, you can now get from prolonged use of sugar. And if that wasn't enough for you guys to hate sugar, <laughs> it also impacts our regulating hormones. So what does that mean? Again, we go back to this cycle. And when I say about this cycle, I feel bad for people at this point, right? Ghrelin, it's a hormone that's released from your stomach. It tells your brain that it's full. 
When you have a lot of sugar, it turns that hormone off. Peptin YY, that's another hormone that's in our intestines. It tells our brain that we're full. It's also turned off, right? So now you are losing control, right? Your hormones are not talking to your brain. And whenever I'm in a grocery store, I have to say that I am a cart judger. And you can, you can match the cart to the person very easily. You can look at the cart and you can say, OK, yep, mm-hmm. But I feel bad for these people because it's becoming an addiction. It's becoming something that they cannot control. So now you're like, wow, well, sugar's that bad. Well, why is it in everything? <laughs> Number one, it's cheap, right? It tastes good, right? Can't argue with that. And it is addictive. And what better way for the food industry to get you go up, buy that product again if it's addictive, right? Guaranteed, you're going to go back to the grocery store and get that product if you are addicted to it. But as I hope I've showed so far, that sugar can chart your, court to sick, chart your course to sickness. It can. It can increase your risk for non-communicable diseases. So now we have a choice. All right, you've got some knowledge out there, and you have a choice. All right, and your choice is really this. Do you want to be sick, or do you want to be healthy? You have that choice. And so what can you do about it? Well, the answers are simple. And if anybody ever tells you that it's complicated, they are lying to you. All right. If they are saying to you that you need supplements and protein shakes and all of this stuff to make you healthy, they are lying to you. Number one, hey, do not consume added sugar. All right. And I'm not talking about, oh, don't eat that added, uh, don't eat that piece of cake later. I'm talking about looking at the back of your food, not just at these nutritional facts, because look at this one. No sugar is added to this chicken broth. This is chicken broth. But in the ingredients, bam, right there, sugar cane is added to it. So you can't just look at the nutritional facts and go, oh, there's no sugar added to it, because there still is. So when I say don't have any added sugar, that's going home, looking in your pantries, and looking at the ingredients, and throwing it out. Sorry, John, about the wasteful thing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat wheat, all right? Wheat is a simple carbohydrate, basically another term for sugar, all right? It does the same exact things to our bodies. It screws up our, um, our um, hormone levels. It does all kinds of crazy stuff to us. Also, if you decide not to have wheat anymore, don't just go for gluten-free products, all right? Just because it says gluten-free on it does not mean it's good. Right. Make sure you're looking at those ingredients, because a lot of times, a lot of these gluten-free products, they add a bunch of stuff to it to make it taste good. All right. And that stuff that tastes good is sugar. Right. Do exercise. And I don't care what it is that you are doing for exercise, just as long as it's constantly varied, functional movements done in a high intensity. And if your regimen does not do that, then you need to find some place that does. All right. And then finally, we need to see food as fuel, right? We need to start putting the right things in our engine. So what is that? Well, that's lots of vegetables. In case you're wondering, your mom was right. You do need to eat your vegetables. They are really important. Eat lots of lean meats and eat some good fats, oils, nuts, seeds, all good fats. A okay. little bit of fruit. Not a lot of fruit, because fruit does have sugar in it. It does have dietary fiber in it, so it doesn't have as big of an impact on you. But I do not recommend eating a lot of it. And then finally, don't add sugar to your diet. All right. Once you start to get into all this, and you start to get into exercise and things like that, I also suggest working with somebody about the timing of your food. Right. Certain foods are better. 
as for, so during certain times of the day, like if you're about to go work out, having a piece of fruit before you work out is a good thing. All right? So I suggest working with somebody on the timing of your food once you get into all this. All right? And finally, don't overeat. You can still screw up your hormone levels by overeating. So I hope today you learned a little bit about how we can not be so sick. Right? The next time you go into a grocery store, I don't want you to think to yourself, well, what is it that I deserve to eat today? I want you to go in like you would go to fill up your car at a gas station. What fuel does my body need today in order to survive? Thank you. <laughs>